Hello Internet, my name is Andrew Edder, and welcome to another episode of Film Editorials. The topic of today's video has a team of unlikely superheroes joining together to stop their former friend from opening a portal to another dimension. No, it's not the Avengers, unfortunately. It's Fant Four Stick. Sorry, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four follows Reed Richards, played by Miles Teller, as he works on fulfilling his lifelong dream of teleporting from one place to another. Because he's a boy genius, he attracts the attention of scientist Dr. Franklin Storm, father to Sue Storm and Johnny Storm. As they try to have a major scientific breakthrough about teleporting matter to an alternate dimension, they also recruit Reed's friend from school, Ben Grimm, and the slightly older Victor Von Doom, whose last name isn't ominous at all. Josh Trank is the director of this film, and he is most famous for the film Chronicle, a found footage movie also about superheroes, and that movie is excellent. I actually had forgotten that he directed that movie. Um, if I had known that, I probably would have been a little bit more excited going in to see this film. Either way, by the end of this video, you should know which of these two superhero movies by Josh Trank I prefer. This movie is, in one word, bad. That's not to say it doesn't have redeeming qualities, though. There's actually quite a lot of basic structures in the film that work pretty well. Uh, there's some interesting notions over here, there's some nice plot development over there, there's some cool characters and relationships over here, but they don't ever seem to connect in any meaningful way. The actors do a pretty good job despite what they're given in terms of the script and the general tone of the movie, that they never seem to be having any fun. Michael B. Jordan, who plays Johnny Storm, is the only one who looks like he's having any fun at all, and that's just because he gets to be the sarcastic, rebellious character. And while we're still talking about good things, this movie is not as painful, nor is it as stupid, as the other two Fantastic Four movies that came out a few years back. That being said, the bar was set really low by those two movies, so the fact that this movie can clear that hurdle really isn't that much of a compliment. Now on to the bad things. There's quite a lot I didn't like about this movie, but I'll try and limit it to the larger concerns and avoid some of the nitpicky stuff. First among these concerns are the fact that this movie is actually just plain boring, especially for a superhero film. Nothing happens, nothing matters, and then when something finally does happen, it's rushed and poorly executed and just generally a waste of my time. Also, the action scene is really cheesy and poorly acted out and very reminiscent of the other two Fantastic Four movies. So it's not even fun to watch once you get there. It's actually just really anticlimactic and disappointing, the ending. Then there's the overall tone of the movie, which is very dark and very serious. I think the only character who smiles more than once is Michael B. Jordan's Johnny Storm, which is why I say he's the only one who looks like he's happy to be there. All the other characters, and I really mean all the other characters, are variations upon It's not fun to watch. It's not fun to be a part of. The guy in front of me fell asleep. Then there are the abundant plot holes. Characters who know things they shouldn't. Characters who know things without having to be told about them. Characters who do things we didn't know they could do. Characters who can't do things we thought they could. And then there's the design of Doctor Doom himself. Now, I've never read the Fantastic Four comics, so I don't have any personal connection or personal interest in how they do it. I'm just judging it off of... Did I like this design? Did I not like this design? And frankly, I didn't like this design. When Doctor Doom first appears in his Doctor Doom form, I thought, well, maybe this will work. This is kind of an interesting take on it. And then he sat up, and he looked really weird. And then his powers were inconsistent with the things that I thought he could do. And then his powers were inconsistent in terms of the movie. He can totally destroy some things and totally create other things, and then when it comes to the team of superheroes, he can't do anything to them. Like, he kind of slows them down for a little while. It seems the only thing more powerful than Sue Storm's force fields are the force field generated by the plot to keep our characters safe. Okay, so my final verdict on Fantastic Four is gonna be one and a half stars out of five. The basics are there, so there's clearly a lot of potential. The actors do a pretty decent job, despite what they've been given. But the movie's really boring, the tone is way too dark, the third act is poorly conceived and poorly executed, and Doctor Doom looks like a weird, charred zombie, not an intimidating figure. I didn't leave the theater feeling particularly annoyed or, like, angry or like my intelligence had been insulted as I had with the other Fantastic Four movies. It feels more like an unsolved connect-the-dots puzzle. There's nice little bits of information here and there, 
but there are no lines connecting them. Okay, that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know what you thought of Fantastic Four down below in the comments. Am I being too hard on it? Please don't forget to like, favorite, share, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.